Hi folks and welcome back to another Travels of Red Rover. I'm Sean. And I'm Corrine. And this week we're back with another RV chat. Yes, we sit down with Craig and Shelley Neeson of Craig Neeson Photography YouTube channel. And we're going to talk about finding and getting to interesting locations. Mostly we're going to talk about the challenges of finding and getting to interesting locations. This is a great topic for all landscape photographers and we hope you'll enjoy the video. So buckle up and let's get going. The other thing that I think people forget about when you're doing this kind of landscape, at least here in the United States, um, if you're out in, like, for example, out here in the Black Hills, you know, locations might be 50, 60 miles apart. And like tonight we're sleeping, well, you're sleeping in your trailer <laughs> here in, in a, in a uh, forestry campsite. We're sleeping in our van in a forestry campsite. It's not unusual for Karina and I to be 30, 40 miles off of the main roads on dirt roads. So you still have to get there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you still have to live. You oh, still yeah. have to feed yourself and, you know, all of the standard stuff that you all have to do every day. But you have to do it in a van or a trailer someplace off road or in a tent or you know, something like that. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of people forget just mm -hmm. how much that actually adds to the uh challenge of getting there. Definitely. It it does. It it really does because the Black Hills, for us to get up here from the Black Hills, we, we rented this, and it's not sponsored. God, I wish they'd sponsor it. <laughs> <laughs> because it's not as cheap as you would think it would be. <laughs> we had to drive um, six hours the first day to camp 45 minutes from home. Mm. Right. <laughs> because we could only find one place to rent one of these, and that was down near Springfield. So we went totally the wrong way from the Black Hills to get here. So the first day was six hours of driving to sleep 45 minutes from home. And the next day was about six hours of driving. And when you're towing something like this, that is a lot of work. Right. Mm -hmm. Because it, it is more intense. I, I see a lot of bonuses, pluses, if you will, to having a van right. mm -hmm. or a slide-in camper than towing a trailer yeah and to be fair we started off with you know class a's and started getting smaller and smaller the more serious we got with photography the smaller the, <laughs> yeah. the, well, the rv got. to that point the smaller the vehicle and the more compact you can live in it for an extended period of time the better the locations you can get to right yeah because the best locations aren't always the ones that are right there at the parking lot yeah you know, right not every location is old faithful you don't just pull up and you know you know in about 45 minutes that thing's going to go off so just go find yourself a place to plant right. down right and, and some of them are locations that very few people have been to and you got to go down a dirt track yep a rutted road uh sometimes through standing water and those of us that are willing to make those adjustments, adjustments in life, yeah, in yeah. life are going to find the images that are more well compelling. and Karina are incredibly blessed because we were able to design and have purpose-built van you know mercedes van and and if you want to see the van it's we'll leave you the link to the video down below here uh or up there uh <laughs> up, up here somewhere up there somewhere or down there somewhere <laughs> it will um, be somewhere around. And, and we recognize <laughs> that not everybody can do that and then i have that ability i mean you know, Karina and I have no ability to build it, so we had to find people that could build it for us, and mm -hmm. and that were willing to build it the way we wanted it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because uh, we live in it for anywhere from five to seven months a year, and um, and we're often way off grid, so it's not like you're going to run to the grocery store in five <laughs> minutes. If you forgot something, yeah. you're living without it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the other thing about. Um, doing the YouTube video and the time it takes is if you're not going to an iconic location, you might have a general idea of where there might be good scenery, but you have to be aware of what's public land versus private land, where you can go hiking, where mm -hmm. you can haul your packs up to, and then you're working from a blank slate. What can I find here that would be compelling? That's a great point. Yeah. A lot of people 
outside the United States don't understand <laughs> the concepts that we have of land ownership here. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. there's no blanket thing that says you can walk across somebody's property and not get shot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Some parts of this country, you step on somebody's land, you have violated castle doctrine, and they have every right to shoot at you. <laughs> it's not like some other countries where you can literally walk through somebody's yard. Yeah. yeah. As yeah. long as you're not damaging their property, it, you're okay. That's right. You have yeah. uh, some kind of walk rights mm -hmm. through the, you know, the the scenery or the area that you're in. I mean, I, we, we have a great story about that that happened literally last uh, 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 the weekend before last. Karina and I were in Thunder Basin National Forest, which is a fantastic area. Uh, there's a lot of mining going on. There's a lot of other uh, oil production going on there. So it's a very busy area, mm -hmm. even though it is a national grassland. Mm -hmm. And it's made up of chunks of public land, some state land, some forestry land, but it also there's large chunks of private land yeah. intermixed in all of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were uh, uh, camped out in the forest and in the middle of nowhere. And another truck comes along the road that we happen to be camped on we haven't seen anybody for two days in this place and this truck comes along and goes oh did you know such and such a reservoir is just right down there and we said oh yeah yeah we went down to see it he said well you know you could stay down there and we said well you know it's been real hot we want to be in the forest he said well why don't you just stay in the forest right beside it i said well that's private land and he said yeah we've lived up here all year we just stay on other people's <laughs> land i said well, that's fine. You live up here. They all know who you are. And I bet you all carrying guns. Mm -hmm. And he laughed at me. He said, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, you, you really do need to know. That's one of the things in, in the U.S. that I think people kind of don't have a, a, big, a good concept for, the, that we really need to know where we are. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are some people that really object if you're on their land. Now, there are other people that have been very kind to Karina and I and said, hey, yeah, you want to get over there? No problem. You know, help yourself and make sure you close the gates. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. So it, it can go both ways, but you got to know. You mm -hmm. really do need to know. And, and yeah. That problem, as I see it, gets worse the farther east you go. Yeah. Because out mm -hmm. west, once, once you get past um, Missouri iowa minnesota you start getting into big tracks of federally owned lands yeah mm -hmm. national forests national grasslands uh, national bureau of land parks, management land BLM land so and the, those are public lands that anybody can use and access certain industries need permits right. you know blm land usually is free range cattle yeah so you got to be careful of the cattle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I Sometimes I think it'd be nice to have all the bison that we used to have a long, yeah. long time ago. And then I think a bison crossing an interstate in the middle of the night, probably not a good idea. No, yeah. no. Well, and that's the other thing that we, we, Kree and I live in Nevada. So, you know, not only do we have, although Death Valley is in California, but we have easy access from where we live to Death Valley. That's a huge, huge national park. But we also have access to the um, basin and, uh, no, I'm sorry, the, uh, uh, I was going to say basin and range. range. Yeah. Basin and Range National Park, but also the Range and Great, Basin, Great Basin. Gr Great Basin National Park and Range and Basin National Monument. Mm -hmm. um, well, Basin and Range National Monument is massive. Mm. Um, there's very, well, I don't think there are any paved roads through it at all. They're all dirt roads. Mm. And, you know, you can literally drive all day from, and I don't think you can, on, the, on those roads, you could easily get from one end to the other. Mm. And that's all open. There's Phenomenal photography opportunities mm -hmm. all throughout it. And you literally get lost. In fact, we have actually gotten lost in in in, in the monument. Uh, you know, gotten turned around on some of the roads and things of that sort. So we do have access to those things. Mm -hmm. and, um, um, and you could literally spend a lifetime photographing that and not get anywhere near to covering it. So Yeah. And then a lot of people... Don't to understand why you guys built the van the way you did. Right. I think mm -hmm. because 
in those areas where the road is literally maybe lo a, lo a line of rocks or they came through with a grader yeah. to mark it a little bit, you're driving on pavement that is not pavement. Right. And if you get the wrong conditions or in some cases the right conditions for photography, you may be in an, a situation where a low clearance vehicle isn't going to get you back out. Well, and, and in fact, actually, the, there's also an attitudinal adjustment. So sometimes, you know, as we all know, crap weather is great photography weather. Yep. You know, storms coming through, you know, uh, rainstorms, stuff like that. So if you're in a location, in a re really remote location, and it just pours, well, you might have to be there for a couple days mm -hmm. because even with our four-wheel drive lifted van, you know, all the extra, um, um, uh, you know, uh, abilities the van has, I, I can't get through some of those roads. I just, it's just yeah. not yeah. going to happen. We're driving yeah. through washes and they could get too deep with water or too the fast mud. Flowing. Too yeah. fast flowing. Too yeah. fast flowing, yeah. The mud can be too sticky and slippery, mm -hmm. so you don't want to come down a slope on a slick mm -hmm. road. Right. Actually, that's probably for us one of the most treacherous things is that it's not getting up the hill. It's getting up the hill and then it absolutely rains like crazy and that hill becomes essentially ba uh, ball bearings all the way down yeah and, and we just we we now have the attitude and this was hard because we're not kind of naturally built this way just say eh, we're staying mm -hmm. yeah. we're gonna be here for a couple days okay mm -hmm. you know that's not the way and, and i'll tell you what it's the other advantage of being retired i don't have to get a job i don't have to get back to a job yeah i don't have i used to always say the worst thing we ever had on the van or the worst thing we ever had on the boats that we lived on was a schedule that was what always got us into trouble but once we kind of turfed that out the day, yeah. you know we really really made things a lot easier a big difference i'm sure <laughs> yeah well and you know you guys have got a few years left before you're going to get there but you know when you do you, you know you'll be ready oh yeah well we hope you enjoyed this video and if you did you might want to check out the next episode that will air on craig neeson photography youtube channel next week same time same station well, different station, but same time. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, Craig Neeson Photography, and we'll have links below. We will have links below. And if you enjoyed the video, please, please give, give us, us a thumbs, thumbs up. up. And uh, as always, we really can be uh, helped by getting you to subscribe. And again, to subscribe to the Travels of Red Rover and to Craig Neeson Photography. Yes, and if you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. And you can put your thoughts in the comment section. Down below, we'll be trying to read and respond to them as quickly as possible. Until next time, bye for now. Bye for now. Bye.